Hello everyone and welcome to the um, SACE transition uh, webinar for uh, the logistics sector. Uh, so my name is uh, Gabriel Staples, I'm a sector manager for, for uh, logistics um, and I will be presenting to you today for around uh, 10, maybe 15 minutes uh, just to go through some of the key changes uh, for the logistics sector qualifications uh, frameworks and standards as they change uh, this year. Uh, so as I say, the purpose of today really will be to uh, do, do some quite technical uh, updates uh, and on a qualification and framework level, uh, just to sh tell you what your alternative uh, uh, options are uh, from uh, 1st of August. Um, as we know, uh, in the box here, you can see that um, uh, from July, from the end of July, all new standards devised by employer groups will uh, replace the frameworks. Uh, so what I'm going to do for the main part of this presentation is to really just to summarise what the current uh, SAIS framework uh, landscape looks like, what qualifications are used in those uh, frameworks um, and how they are being replaced by new standards. Uh, so on this slide here, you can see that um, uh, there's a couple of slides like this, and you can see that um, what we've done is is put the uh, framework, existing SACE framework title on the left. Uh, we have uh, qualifications that are used in, in those uh, frameworks uh, where appropriate, um, and identified where there is a standard replacement or, or, or where there isn't. Um, in, in the case of logistics sector, there are pretty much no qualifications uh, mandated at all. Now, the impact of that is that um, you will not be able to claim funding for um, a qualification on programme in terms of covering the awarding body uh, registration certification fees. However, with mapping that we have provided, and I will talk about that in a minute, um, you will actually be able to uh, use some of these qualifications as I'm detailing in these tables over the next couple of slides. Um, you will actually be able to use the uh, qualifications to meet the on-programme requirements for knowledge, skills, behaviours. Um, what you'll need to do as a provider is sort of obviously evidence that uh, uh, that the qualification does actually add value and it does uh, map to the uh, the standards which we've, we've created mapping uh, in certain areas to help you do that. Uh, so in this uh, uh, this framework, um, you can, the frameworks uh, listed on this page, uh, you can see that um, uh, we have uh, a number of uh, endpoint assessment products as well as on program qualifications that can be used uh, in these new new uh, standards. So these are supply chain warehouse operative, uh, LGV driver um, uh, on this page. Um, where there is a, a gap, for example, you've got um, uh, in terms of the gap, there is no standard, for example, for the uh, level three traffic office that just exists at level two, uh, which you'll see over the page. Uh, and yes, here, an intermediate traffic office level two. Um, and uh, you can also see that um, here the uh, logistics operations as well, uh, you know, potentially could be used to meet the supply chain operator standard as well. So I'll just leave this uh, slide up on screen for an, uh, another minute. Um, so where we have identified uh, framework qualifications that meet the uh, the, the the new standards. Um, as I say, that there is mapping that we have provided, um, and you'll need to uh, obviously in your conversations with employers, you'll need to uh, uh, articulate to them how the uh, the qualifications meet uh, the on-program requirements. And one of the advantages of doing that, well, several advantages. Firstly, is that um, they, the students will get a, a quality assurance, uh, quality assured, um, a validated qualification. Uh, on program before they get to endpoint assessment. Um, that obviously will mean that in the event they do drop out or fail their EPA, they do still leave with something. Um, uh, and also it, it gives a, a higher quality, uh, uh, obviously a higher quality offer that you can give the employer uh, on program rather than simply making a training program out of the employer's existing 
uh, training, the off the job time that they have to meet, um, and some training programs that you may have uh, worked up for the, uh, the new standards. As I say, the endpoint assessments we've got uh, cover large goods vehicle driver, uh, supply chain warehouse operative and supply chain operator, that last one being uh, traffic office pathway uh, that we've developed, not the removals. Uh, so in terms of this summary slide here, it's, it's just to go into a bit more detail, the standards um, which replace the old frameworks are written by employer-led groups. Awarding bodies don't actually have a particular say in the development of that standard, but we've been uh, involved uh, after these, these have gone live, and we've uh, developed endpoint assessments uh, in those, those areas I've highlighted um, to meet those requirements. Um, so whether they're the, in terms of the, the documents that are given to us, the documents that are published, um, we have to take them as they are online and uh, develop reliable and valid assessments uh, around those statements. Um, the assessments uh, plan uh, that we use to develop the EPAs is um, to test competence against the KSBs, that's knowledge, skills and behaviours in the standard. Um, and the, the aim of the qualification would be to, uh, where you should choose to use it, where an employer wants to use it, would be to make sure that uh, employers get, the learners, sorry, apprentices get to the endpoint assessment uh, point, so the gateway for that endpoint assessment. Um, and get them to a state where they where they are where they are likely to to succeed at the endpoint assessment. Excuse me. Uh, so this uh, slide here is just a screenshot of our uh, web pa web page. Uh, on here you'll find uh, specifications for the uh, qualifications. That, linked to the on-program requirements. You'll find information by sector uh, across everything that we offer for the new apprenticeships. Uh, there's also a legacy page for the uh, old uh, frameworks as well. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll also see information about that endpoint assessment uh, where we do uh, have um, uh, an EPA offer. Um, a slide, this slide here is just really talking about the, um, the mapping and use of qualifications. Um, there are some examples here of um, where we've got um, uh, mapping. Uh, so we've got on those links, um, uh, but you'll, you'll be able to see that uh, on the actual website I've just, uh, just talked about. Um, on those links, you'll see that um, we've mapped the uh, qualifications to the uh, KSB statements for the new uh, standards. Um, so there are several qualifications that can actually be used uh, on programme uh, for these standards um, to make sure that learners are adequately prepared for EPA, that they get to their gateway point before endpoint assessment. Uh, just a note here on, on some developments uh, to update you. Um, Express Delivery Operative, that is a standard that um, we've not yet developed an EPA for that we may do uh, during the year. Um, this particular standard is for, as it says, for uh, postal workers, careers, express delivery drivers, many thousands of operators who work up and down the UK uh, delivering, uh, really using smaller vehicles. Um, now, one of the issues with the new um, standards is that the uh, LGV uh, standard is obviously specifically designed for lorry drivers um, and it has mandatory license acquisition within it. Now a lot of uh, people in logistics don't they don't uh, drive lorries they drive uh, smaller vehicles vans um, and, and a lot of them are in fact self-employed as well um, so van drivers aren't really catered for um, however the closest fit would be express delivery operative uh, standard um, though that may not be fit for purpose for everyone. Um, we are considering developing the EPA, as I say, um, and, and we'd be interested in having your expressions of interest uh, direct to me, please, at my email address there. Um, it may be that employers decide that they want a van-specific standard uh, for the um, goods vehicle driver uh, framework uh, to replace the LGV. Uh, as you'll know, the driving goods vehicle qualification did used to have pathways for articulated drawbar van uh, and actually we cater for all, all types of vehicles. So there is still a bit of an omission in the new uh, standards. 
Um, in terms of LGV itself, there is a discussion. Uh, I've heard that uh, they are looking at potentially further restrictions to to make it just for articulated lorries, which uh, may again be another another restriction, maybe uh, seen as quite negative. Um, in terms of the uh, quality assurance, uh, the NSAR is the QA body, and they have actually been uh, quite supportive in that they've issued some guidance notes to us uh, that we're implementing, and that is around the uh, correct and consistent interpretation of performance outcomes for distinction criteria, um, which should actually help us uh, give uh, awarding for our endpoint assessment that is consistent along with um, any other EPA body that's also awarding the standard. Uh, they've also agreed that uh, in how we've uh, developed it is uh, the way with the approach we've taken is correct in that um, as we've set separate uh, pass merit and distinction uh, sorry pass and distinction criteria um, that that you you all you have to meet all pass criteria to pass and you have to meet all distinction criteria to um, uh, to, to get a distinction and and that is irrespective of the marks that uh, are awarded which they originally had in that um, uh, assessment plan they put a percentage mark scheme uh, over the top of the descriptors for the uh, the pass and distinction which was quite uh, difficult for us to implement as an EPA body and um, just a summary here on the support and offer obviously there's the FAQ document available which I've mentioned um, if you have a business development manager you can contact them directly uh, customer services uh, phone number is on screen um, and uh, there are two emails there, depending on whether you're an FE uh, centre or a work-based learning uh, centre, i.e. private training provider. Uh, thank you for your time today.